So one of the downsides of being a small YouTuber is that I can't afford real wine glasses. So today I thought I would show you how to make a virtual one in Blender. So the technique that I'm going to use to model the wine glass is something I call the trace and spin technique. The whole idea is that you have an outline of the shape that you want to model, you trace it around it with vertices, and then you use the spin tool to create a 3D shape of that object. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and delete the default cube as is tradition. Next thing you want to do is you want to import a reference image. So I'm going to use this image that I found online for our wine glass. Uh, I'll go ahead and link this image down in the description below if you want to follow along with me. And you want to go ahead and line it up in the center. The next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and add an object. It can be really any object. It doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and collapse it down to one vertice. I'm just going to go ahead and select a plane. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tap into edit mode. We're going to select all the vertices and we're going to hit M and merge at center just like that. And at this point, you want to just double check, make sure that your vertice on the X axis is at zero. Next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and line it up with the bottom of the wine glass. And that's pretty close. And we're now ready to start tracing our vertice around the object. So go ahead and have your, uh, with your vertice selected, hit E to extrude, and that will go ahead and give us a line of a next vertice. So let's go ahead and just place it here, for example, and go ahead and do a few more until we're at the bottom of the wine glass. And at this point, it's just a matter of going ahead and tracing these vertices all the way around the wine glass. Now, it can be a bit tedious to hit E and then manually move the vertice into position. There is a shortcut if you want to try and speed up a little bit. If you go ahead and place your cursor wherever you want your next vertice to be, then you hit control and then right click. That will go ahead and extrude a new vertice to wherever your mouse is pointing uh, in the viewport. And so that's a pretty quick way to actually start outlining these vertices. It's a lot less fiddly than trying to hit E and then manually move it into position. And so now all we have to do is just outline the entire right half of this image for our wine glass. So let's go ahead and speed forward through this a little bit. So we've reached the top. Now we just need to round the lip. Try and get a little bit of detail here at the lip just so that we have a well-defined one. You don't want this to be too sharp of a point, especially when we add our subdivision surface modifier later. You want there to be some definition at the top here. So once you got that, just keep going. Now, whenever you get to the bottom down here and you've placed your last vertice, what you want to do is you want to have your last vertice selected and make sure that it's X value equals zero, that it's dead center in the center on the X axis. The Y and the Z obviously don't matter, but you want the uh, X axis to match up for the first and for the last vertice for this to work correctly. So now go ahead and select all of your vertices so you can check your outline. Now we're gonna go ahead and hide our image just so we're working with the vertices. And now with all the vertices of the right half of our class selected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to the left side and we're gonna select the spin tool. Now the spin tool is actually a unique tool in Blender. What it's going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to extrude all these vertices around an axis. So if we go ahead, come down here, control and click, you can see that as we move our mouse, it will start to extrude the vertices uh, around the center of our object. That's why we needed the X uh, values to be the same for the start and the last one so that they properly overlap. And so you can use it this way to go ahead and just go all the way around 360, but there is an easier way to get a full 360 extrusion. So if we just come down here and we hit the plus button just once, that will give you a full 360 extrusion. And if you come down here to the spin pop up here, you can actually select how many steps it takes whenever it's doing the extrusion. Let's go ahead and select the number like uh, 24. That's probably a bit too many, but that's fine. And just like that, we have a pretty decent base mesh using the spin tool. Now there is one thing we are going to have to manually correct. If we come down here to the bottom of the model, I'll show you what that is. So one of the downsides of the spin tool is that it doesn't merge any vertices. So if there are any overlapping vertices when it does an extrusion, it just ignores them and stacks on top of each other. And so what that means is for the center point here, for each one of these extrusions that the spin tool added, it added a new vertice here at the center, um, all just overlapping each other. And so if I go ahead and move one of these vertices around, you can see that all the other vertices stay the same. So there's actually a whole bunch of vertices all stacked on top of the same point here at the center. Same thing for the inside of the wine glass. And so in order to fix this, what we can do is we can merge by distance. So select all of your vertices with A, hit M, and then merge by distance. 
And so what this does is if any vertices are too close to each other, it goes ahead and combines them into one. And this means that for all of our overlapping vertices, they are all now fixed. So if we come down here and select the bottom one again, you can see that it now moves all the faces just as we expect. And you want to make sure that you always remember to do this because if you go and try and shade with all of these vertices overlapping, you're going to get some very strange art of acting. And there we go. With our base mesh out of the way, we can now tab back into object mode, right click, shade smooth. And as we can see, it looks pretty good. Now, if you want to go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier to this, you can, but it looks pretty good shaded as is. I'm going to go ahead and add one just in case. And this is why I was saying you wanted to add some definition to the lip of your wine glass earlier, because if you get it too thin, then this lip can get some deformation when you add a subdivision surface modifier, or if you just shade smooth. But that is actually looking pretty good. And with that done, we're going to go ahead and hop over to the shading tab. So select your wine glass object, go to the shading tab, and let's go ahead and make a nice glass material for this object. So to do that, just come down here, select new, and that will give you the default principal BSDF shader. Now Blender actually has a really nice default glass shader that I actually want us to use. So with your material selected here in the material tab, come over here to the material menu over here and go to surface and just hit that to bring down the drop down. Instead of principled BSDF, we're going to select the glass BSDF. And you can see already we can got some uh, transparency going on. Um, by default, we're set to EV. I'm going to go ahead and change that to cycles just because I think cycles looks a lot better and go ahead and go into render preview. Now it's kind of hard to see the glass at the moment just because there's nothing on the other side of the glass to get some uh, perception about. So let's go ahead and add a quick background. So let's click, select the plane. Let's go ahead and scale that up a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and add a background to it. So hop into edit mode, select this edge, extrude up. I'm just moving very fast here because this isn't too important. You can go ahead and add whatever background you want. If you haven't seen that you want to use this in, that would actually be 100% better. Just something so we have a little bit of depth perception to our glass. You see, that's already looking a little bit better than just the plain gray background. So one thing you may notice is that the glass is actually a little bit fuzzy. That's because of this roughness factor down here in the material. So if we turn that all the way down, we get a very nice transparent and clear glass, which is exactly what we want. And you can play with this roughness and IQR values. The IQR is kind of how uh, see-through the glass is. So if you turn this value up, you'll actually get a much darker looking glass as it's not reflecting as much light, but I like the default value. So let's go ahead and stick with 1.45. And another thing you could do is you could also play with the color here. So if you wanted a nice like red glass, you can have that, or if you wanted green or blue for whatever reason, I'm going to leave it with white, but if you wanted something like a rose tinted glass, you could do that too. And just for kicks, I'm going to go ahead and add a material to the background, give it a nice blue, if I can actually select the thing, uh, give it a nice teal, just so it's not just a plain board white. And now we're ready to start setting up our camera so we can get a nice render. So one thing that you can do to quickly set up your camera, if you have a nice view in the viewport that you want to go ahead and render out, if you hit control alt zero, that will actually move the active camera in the scene to wherever your viewport is and position it to wherever you're looking. That's a really nice, easy way to position your camera. Uh, if you're having trouble doing that and you don't have to, if you don't want to mess with a rig or anything, let's go ahead and scale up the background just so it's covering the entire render plane. And just like that, we have a pretty nice composition going. So let's go ahead and render this out and see how it looks. And there you go. Now we have a really nice render of a virtual wine glass for our virtual wine so we can host our virtual friends in virtual reality. I hope you virtually enjoyed watching my virtual video on creating virtual objects. And I wish you victory on all of your virtual visual ventures and vocations. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in a future video.